This is Nina Curley of Wamda Media. I'm here with Tarek and Matt of Not Standard, an international custom clothing company. How are you guys? Good, thanks. thanks. It's pleasure to be here. How did you first get inspired to start a custom online and offline uh, clothing company for men? Sure. Um, well, it started about two years ago, uh, just by way of background. Uh, I was an ex-banker, used to work for Lehman, uh, but mostly out of London. Um, but I also had family here. So I used to come over, um, buy a nice suit from Bird Dubai, not very high price point, and fly back. And everyone used to pat me on the back and say, wow, you've done really well this year. You went to Savile Row and paid 2,000 pounds for your suit. And I was like, no, I didn't. I went down to Bird Dubai and paid 1,000 dirhams. Um, and that's sort of when the light bulb clicked to my head. What if we could connect tailors with um, Western consumers that could buy a tailor-made suit at a much lower price point? And as a poorly dressed American, I came over here with all of the knowledge my father had imparted on how to buy a suit, um, looking absolutely awful, and got made fun of by people like Targ and, and everyone else from the UK, Europe, rest of the world. And uh, we got pretty good at making suits, custom suits. And as we got better and better at it, our other poorly dressed American friends would drag us along down to Bird Dubai, down to Satwa, to teach them how to make a nice custom suit. Then it was friends from out of town. Then it was family members who wouldn't even come over and how would you take their measurements? How do you, how do you get these guys one of these wonderful cheap custom suits? And it starts to grow and the word starts to travel and my background's in tech startups, Targ's in finance, John, our co-founder as well, is also in finance. And you start to think, maybe we can make a company out of this. So we started digging into everything behind the scenes, figuring out how custom suits work and how tailors work, how uh, actually pitiful the entire current system is, mm -hmm. and that it could be massively improved. And suits, shirts, custom clothing is one of the few things that's done better in this part of the world, in Asia and emerging markets, than it is in developed nations like the US or the UK. So we're really bringing that, the tailoring tradition and the access to wonderful tailors, fabrics, and all sorts of great things over to the developed world, doing it at a much lower price point, much higher quality, and in this case, doing it online. So you're making men look better around the globe. That's exactly, yes. <laughs> That's exactly it. Funnily enough, um, now that we've run a good number of sales, we've got a good idea of the stats behind the purchasers and customers. Um, and we found that 35% of the decision-making process, whether it's directly or indirectly, are actually women. So we started to very cleverly target women's magazines and blogs now to try and drive conversions. Because we get a lot of, hey, where have you guys been? One, do you make women's suits? And then two, could you dress my husband better? Yeah, can you upgrade our man is one of the bigger points. Um, What's also interesting is we're not targeting people who've ever made custom suits before. We were poorly dressed, we never did. So the way we've grown and the way we've gotten out there is not by trying to take you from your tailor. If you have a tailor, you're probably not our customer. So we initially didn't even market in Dubai where we make everything. We actually marketed to people that would go to Brooks Brothers or go to Dubai Mall or go to Bloomingdale's on 57th Street in New York City and buy something off the rack that didn't fit. So we take from the 99% who've never had a custom suit before. Not from the 1%, which is all that really makes custom in the world today. So you're actually not targeting the region. How did you guys, I mean, aside from advertising in women's magazines, how did you target these, um, these poor American men who wear really boxy suits? Well, we originally went out there, um, actually our, our first targets were here in the region, um, just through word of mouth with uh, Go Nabbit running a deal for us before they were acquired by Living Social to see if the market would be receptive to it. Um, it was, it was an overwhelmingly successful deal and it got people to try us out. And then they started coming back and then they started telling their friends and then everyone else in their office. So we did the same thing in the US with companies like Groupon and Gilt, but we also have had very, very fortunate press coverage. Uh, the team from The Daily Show wore our tuxes when they accepted their Emmy on stage. Um, James Vanderbeek wore one of our classic line suits to the GQ Men of the Year party and has been covered all over, LA Times, New York Times, everywhere. Um, GQ's done some work on us, Yahoo, L, um, The National here in Dubai, um, Gulf News as well, the Alpha Magazine. So we've been very, very lucky and we've started covering the Middle East and started going after the Middle East we were actually really surprised because people can go down to Bird Dubai and make a custom suit. Why would they come to us when they have a tailor already? And we're, what we heard time and time again is it's so much more convenient to be able to just go online, design what I want, and really create something I'm going to like, which is the ethos for the entire company. We create pride. You make something, it's unique, it's not standard. Put it on for the first time, you're happy about it, you create something a little crazier, you change 
the thread color here, you make functional buttons, and it starts to spiral out of control, and pretty soon we have your entire wardrobe. Then you show it to your friends, and that's how we grow. Nice sales pitch, it's not standard. Um, so then, so you guys also have an offline presence. Why did you decide to go online and offline at the same time? Are those targeting different markets? You want to take oh, it? Sure. Um, we actually originally started online. The, the impetus for the company was to bring what we have here in Dubai, the access to these great tailors, the access to fabrics that come from all over the world, and expose it to the rest of the world, to people that don't have access to it. And so the way to do that was to do it online. People started asking us, can we get fitted? Can we come into a showroom? Do you have a showroom in New York City? So we opened a showroom in New York City on Broadway. Do you have tailors that we can go to that might be not standard certified? They can do alterations for us. Yes, so we do now. And then our offline expansion followed. We had stores that said, I don't carry custom suits. Can I carry your suits? Yes, of course you can. Can you have a guy come over to my office and bring some fabrics with him? Because everyone loves my suit so much that they want to buy one too. Great, yes, we can do that. And pretty soon we need more and more people and the offline presence grows. And what we've seen is, is there are so few people in the US, even in the UK, Australia, New Zealand, where we sell a lot of suits that don't know you can get a custom suit, cheap, well-made, nice, luxurious, and that it fits, that we actually have to go stop them where they're about to make a mistake department stores. Yeah. So we're in late stage talks with some very large department stores, especially in the US and Australia, to actually put a custom shop with touch screens so you can design your own suit in the store to keep them from going one step further and grabbing something off the rack that fits the average fat American man. So, so does this use of technology make it easier for you guys to scale because otherwise it would be a really capital intensive business, you'd be hiring salespeople. This way, since we formally launched in April, the website went live in July, mm -hmm. so in the nine months of formal operations, I mean we've been testing for like over two years now, but nine months of formal operations with about 10 of us, 10 employees, we've sold over 1,500 suits. There's no way we couldn't have done that without the internet. Yeah. Amazing. Just finally, I mean, it's interesting that you guys are based in Dubai and you're basically selling to the states, the UK, Australia, New Zealand. Um, what are the advantages of being in Dubai? What are the challenges? And what do you think needs to change for startups? It's a, that's a dangerous territory. Uh, we, we started the company here in Dubai and we make our clothes here in Dubai because we have access to the talent. There aren't large groups of very skilled tailors in the US and the UK. The tailors that were around 100 years ago, their kids are lawyers and bankers and accountants, dentists. And we, we've done the research, we've run around in China, Cambodia, Australia, you name it. Um, to find a place that gives you a really good high quality product that's scalable is very hard, very hard. And time and time again, we found ourselves coming back here. So mm -hmm. it's sort of great. Um, also from a time zone perspective, it's great because you sit in the middle of the world, all the way from Australia, Asia, spanning all the way to the US. So we do have one of our co-founders in the United States permanently, full time, because that's our biggest market. Um, I sit here and sort of overlook operations, and then Matt lives on a plane, pretty much. Thank you, Emirates. Yeah. Uh, so we, we use the fact that I mean, Dubai has historically been a trading center, and it's no different today between Textile City, Jebel Ali, our own factories in Al-Quz and other places, we're able to serve the entire world from a central hub. So I don't think our logistics will ever move. I think uh, a lot of our customer service is best placed here to serve customers everywhere. Um, all of our management and our core structures are here in Dubai, but we will be expanding in different areas around the world to serve customers offline in sales ways. But it's, it's been the best place for us to start and actually hasn't had too many difficulties. I've started companies in the US, I've started companies here, and it's, it's been great so far. I think one of the challenges from my perspective is, whereas in Europe or the US, in order to employ someone, I think the visa issue for mm -hmm. us is some of the hardest. So if I find a great tech developer in Jordan, I'm pulling my hair, literally, to try and get him <laughs> over here and overcoming those hurdles. So some of the legislation could certainly um, a, be aided um, mm -hmm. to improve the situation. Um, but other than that, overall, it's, it's a very positive environment to work in. That's great to hear. I mean, I guess we've all heard about, you know, the laws that need to change, the bankruptcy and visa laws. Um, but it's good to hear that this really is the best destination, the best place for you guys to launch your operations from. Um, thanks so much for chatting with Wanda. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Great.